here's a problem from the book that uh, we did in class, but a lot of folks were gone. It's a great example of combining using calculators and calculus. Um, it's not just one function to analyze, but it's something a little more uh, interesting and really quite common in, when you actually start using mathematics for real. Um, a whole family of functions. So depending on what this number c is, you're going to get various different looking kinds of functions uh, from x to the fourth plus cx squared plus x. And what they ask is when, like for different values of c, you might see inflection points or you might not see inflection points. You might see critical points or you might not see critical points. You might see different numbers of critical points. Um, and when one of the most interesting things change, uh, questions to ask is what, for what values of c do the answers to the questions change? Um, for what values of C will I get um, just one critical point or two or three? When does it change? And so there's an interplay between trial and error and um, actually pencil and paper analysis and using calculus that's really nice here. So uh, I was going to try and do this on the calculator emulator, but it doesn't really work to record a video on that computer apparently. Um, so I'm going to do it on this thing, which is a lot prettier and more high-powered than what we do on the calculator. But everything I do here, you can pretty much do, although it's going to be slower. One of the nice things this program can do is I've put in um, x to the fourth plus cx squared plus x, and it can animate a bunch of different values of c. So let me go ahead and run that, and we'll see what the kinds of shapes are that we can get. One thing that's really important that a lot of people miss when they first try to, to try to do this problem is that it's really important to try values of C that are both positive and negative. Turns out that if you're asking about critical points or if you're asking about um, inflection points, if you restrict C to be positive, you only see about this last third of the movie. And there's nothing much interesting that's changing there. It always has one critical point right at the bottom, just one absolute min and um, there's no inflection points. But if you actually look at it carefully, uh, I think I'm starting here with c equals minus 4. Then here there are inflection points. There's three critical points. And then, ah, there's something going on in the middle there where we lose one of the critical points af um, before, well, let's see, is it after or before we lose an inflection points? A little hard to tell. So the first thing they ask, in this analysis is where the in this movie do the inflection points disappear basically you can try and do that by trial and error but this is definitely a point where you want to go to the actual analysis oh yeah let's close that okay so let's go ahead and calculate f prime of x that's 4x cubed plus 2cx plus 1 f double prime of x, if we're interested in inflection points, that's 12x squared plus 2c. So this is what I like to call a backwards problem, really. It's a whole bunch of possibilities, and we're not saying, OK, here's the value of c, go find the inflection points. It's suppose there's something that's true about the inflection points, like there are some. What must be true of c? And the great thing about that is you actually proceed in exactly the same way as with a forwards problem. You just let the c be a variable, and you realize that eventually you're going to get something where you might have some sort of equation for c or some sort of condition on c, and you just let that happen naturally. So if you're going to find inflection points, we want to find change, sign changes for f double prime. And so the first thing to do is find where that's 0. We also would maybe want to look out for DNEs in general, but there's definitely not going to be any DNEs, no, no points of uh, non-existence for the second derivative. OK, so we can solve that for x. x squared is minus c over 6. And so x is plus or minus root c over 6. Minus c over 6. Boop. But wait a minute, that looks suspicious. It's a, it's a minus inside of a square root. Is that ever going to work? Well, if c is positive, no, that's not going to work. There will be no inflection points. And, but if c is negative, then there will be some. So that's an important thing to realize, is that just by going ahead and solving the problem as if it were a forwards problem, and then just paying attention to the answer carefully, we get the solution of the backwards problem. Um, you don't want to just say, oh, this is impossible. 
usually when you when you encounter a dead end, it's not a it doesn't mean the universe has come to an end. It means that um, it's telling you something about what should be true about your inputs. For this to actually have solutions, C had better be negative so that what's inside here would be positive. If C is positive, which is completely possible, it just means there will be no solutions to this equation, f double prime equals zero, and so there will be no inflection points. So the short answer is whoa, that the, um, the transition value here is C equals zero. And if C is less than zero, we get two inflection points. And if C oh uh, equals uh, greater than zero, we'll we'll deal with equals zero in a minute. We get none. If C equals zero exactly, then we get just one with C C equals zero because it's going to give X equals zero one inflection point. Okay. So that's a great uh, example of you play around on the calculator, and if you're as long as you plug in a negative C at some point, you'll see at least a, a few snapshots of the movie I played down here, um, and then you'll be led to try to do this investigation. But um, to actually figure out that C equals zero is exactly the, uh, the the break point, it's just much easier to just go through the calculus. Now, what about the second question they ask? Is um, is when is the transition between numbers of critical points. There's, let's run the movie again. When we run the movie from negative, wait, from negative values, I think this is a negative four, we can see those inflection points. Okay, now there's something going on here that um, looks like it's developing a, a rest here. and then it's getting simpler and simpler at the end. So something interesting is happening in there and when is that happening? So we'd like to know um, what happens in that region. So let's look at it, let's zoom in a little bit in time. It looked like toward the beginning and the end of the movie wasn't the interesting part. So let me change the settings here. Okay, so let's change the settings to like minus two to zero. We're pretty sure that when C is greater than zero, it didn't look like anything was hap anything interesting was happening. So let's zoom in here. Now this is the kind of thing where you'd have to do a little bit more laborious trial and error, or do like a y1, y2, y3, or something like that on the calculator. Let's see if we can look at this with the animation. Okay, it was at the end. Okay, so. Now, what have we got? At the start, we've got down, up, down. Okay. And then now it's down, flat, up. So that's different. And now it's down, up, and then it's kind of backing off a little bit, so the concavity is still changing. It's concave up, concave down, concave up. There's two, still those two inflection points, but it's not actually producing another well in here. Now that's well before half half the movie is over. That that seems to have changed, and so s still we've got a, a bottom and then just kind of a weak increase point. It's steep and then not quite as steep and then steep again. So we've still got those inflection points, but it's no longer giving us more than one critical point. So it looked like it was before half of the movie was over. Yeah, nothing else seems to be happening interesting here, this interesting here. Now this notice that that's a little subtle. You have to really look at that carefully to see what's going on there. Um, and so that gives us, let me maybe zoom in one more time at least in terms of the timing, uh, wrong one. Okay, so we're gonna zoom in again if this uh, program doesn't mess up, it's liable to. I'm probably making it very confused here. Okay, we're going to try and do it again. So it looked like somewhere between minus 2 and minus 1. In fact, it didn't look like it happened right away. Maybe it's mi one, minus 1.75 to minus 1.25. Let's try that. 
and let it compute all those different curves. Let it animate it. Let's go back to the beginning. Okay, so we definitely have a little minimum here. This is at C is minus 1.75. And then it seems to be, ooh, oh, I, see, I think I saw it disappear right there. There was a little bit of a minimum, and now it's just maybe, maybe a rest. Maybe there's still a critical point there. But now, it, after, toward the end of the movie, it looks like there's no critical point. It looks like it's always going up after this guy. So that seems to be only one critical point. Okay, so, and it seems like the region of interest is right here around one half. So let's actually zoom in one more time, both in space and in time, and uh, see if we can really nail this down, and then try to show it uh, algebraically. So let's just actually graph from 0.25 to 0.75 and minus 1.6 to minus 1.4 because it seemed like right in the middle of that interval was where it was changing. And I have to admit, doing this whole problem with uh, just the TI calculator would be, um, it's a lot of work if you have to guess and check all this. Okay, so there's that little region Remember, uh, there was a, there's a way off to the left, there was a, always a critical point. What we're interested in is, is there a critical point or two in here? Well, here we start out with two of those two critical points. And then, right in the middle of the movie, we just lost that critical point. Those two critical points. And it's still wiggly, that's what's causing, causing the inflection points, but it's wiggly but it's always sloping upward. So it looks like we'd like to show so the conjecture here is that at c equals minus 1.5 or minus 3 halves we get a um, change in the number of critical points. Well, so let's think about um, what that would mean about f prime. That would mean that f prime would change the number of zeros it has. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's graph f prime then. That might be an interesting thing to graph. So let's go into here, edit this guy. And instead of graphing f, we, t we graph f 4x cubed plus 2cx plus 1. And let's animate that guy. Now I'll probably have to. Um, no, it's still the right the right time and space intervals. That's probably pretty good. But now we're going to actually let it graph the derivative. Okay. Let's see. Let's go back to the beginning. Okay. So here's the derivative. Let's play it forward. Ah, uh, we're going to lose the zeros for the derivative. Aha! And we even have a precise idea of where that's going to happen. So it looks like at time t equals or c equals minus three halves, we're, we should get exactly one zero of the derivative at one half, and it should also be exactly one of those inflection points. Because remember, if this is the first derivative, the zero of the derivative of the derivative that should be um, an inflection point as well. And so that's something we can definitely check explicitly. We're going to plug in x equals one half and c equals minus one, minus three halves. And we're going to check that that's both a critical point and an inflection point. And that's therefore an uphill rest, and that's exactly what we expect to see. So let's try that. Uh, I just think it has to rebuild its uh, picture, even though we're not going to use it anymore. OK. So f of x equals x to the fourth minus 3 halves x squared plus x. That's supposed to be our magic function. f prime of x is 4x cubed minus 3x plus 1. f double prime of x. I'm just going to, just putting in the explicit values and then we'll plug in the x as well. 12x squared minus 3. Okay, so f prime of 1 half is going to be 4 eighths, which is 1 half. I'm plugging it into f prime here. Minus 3 halves, aha, plus 1, and that's equal to 0. And f double prime of 1 half 
is going to be 12 fourths. I'll just write it out. That's 3 minus 3 ah, equals 0. And so that's the magic value where we can get this picture where the derivative is 0 and the second derivative is 0. That's exactly that uphill rest, the signature for an uphill rest, the 0, 0 in the sign chart that we would expect to get that we saw in the transition in the movie. Okay, that's definitely long enough.